Welcome back to Learn English with Zoe. Today, we're going to cover a very interesting story called My Journey to Remembering English Words, which is perfect for English learners. But before we get started, I would like to know your reason or motivation for learning English. Now let's jump in and make learning English a fun adventure together. My Journey to Remembering English Words Chapter 1. The First Challenge I remember the day I decided to learn English words. I sat down with my notebook, full of hope. The page in front of me was empty, waiting for me to fill it with new words. I wrote the first word, apple. Easy, I thought. But when I tried to learn more words, I started to feel lost. Every time I looked at the new words, they slipped from my mind. I felt like I was trying to hold water in my hands. I wanted to learn, but it was so hard to remember. The more I tried, the more I forgot. That night, I stared at the ceiling and thought, maybe learning English isn't for me. I felt so disappointed in myself. In class, I felt embarrassed. Other students seemed to remember words so easily. They would raise their hands, answer questions, and speak in English. I, on the other hand, sat quietly, afraid to speak. I didn't want anyone to know how much I was struggling. I tried to hide my notebook. I didn't want anyone to see the list of words I couldn't remember. Every time I looked at the page, my heart sank. I wanted to improve, but I didn't know how. Chapter 2 A New Decision One evening, I sat down and thought, what if I could find a better way to learn English words? I knew I had to change something. I couldn't keep doing the same thing and expect different results. I took a deep breath and told myself, you can do this. You just need a new plan. I decided that night I would try again, but this time, I would do it differently. The next morning, I picked just one word. I told myself, if I can remember just one word today, I'll be happy. The word I chose was banana. I wrote it on a small piece of paper and carried it with me everywhere. Every time I touched the paper, I said the word out loud. Banana. It was just one word, but it felt good to focus on it. And by the end of the day, I could say it without looking at the paper. I felt proud. Chapter 3. Building Slowly After my success with banana, I decided to do the same thing the next day. This time, I picked cat. I wrote it down, repeated it, and carried it with me. Slowly, word by word, my vocabulary started to grow. I wasn't trying to learn too many words at once. Instead, I focused on just one word each day. It felt more manageable, and I didn't feel as overwhelmed as before. As I kept practicing, I realized something important, repetition works. The more I repeated a word, the easier it became to remember. I wasn't just reading the word once and forgetting it. I was saying it over and over again until it became part of my memory. I started to enjoy this process. It felt like a small victory every time I remembered a new word. Chapter 4 My First Conversation One day, something amazing happened. I was with a friend, and I used the word banana in a sentence without even thinking about it. I like bananas, I said. 
My friend smiled and nodded. It was the first time I used a new English word in a real conversation. It might seem like a small thing, but for me, it was huge. I felt proud of myself, and it gave me confidence to keep going. I decided to take my learning more seriously. I bought a small notebook and started writing down every new word I learned. But I didn't just write the word. I also wrote a sentence with it. This helped me understand how to use the word in real life. For example, with the word dog, I wrote, the dog is playing in the garden. Writing sentences made the words feel more real. They weren't just on a page anymore. They were part of my daily life. Chapter 5, Bad Days But not every day was easy. Some days, no matter how much I practiced, I couldn't remember anything. One night, after studying for hours, I tried to recall five words. They were simple words, but my mind was blank. I felt frustrated and angry. I thought about giving up. Maybe I'll never be good at English, I said to myself. That night, I went to bed feeling defeated. The next day, something unexpected happened. I was watching an interview with a famous singer. She talked about her struggles with learning English. She said it took her years to feel comfortable speaking the language, and she still made mistakes. Hearing her story made me realize something important, everyone struggles. Even successful people face challenges. What matters is that they keep trying. That's when I decided I wouldn't give up. Chapter 6, Making Learning Fun I realized that learning didn't have to be boring. I could make it fun. I started to play games with my words. For example, I would create silly sentences, like the cat is driving a car or the dog is singing. It made me laugh, and it helped me remember the words. I also used apps on my phone that turned learning into a game. I felt like I was having fun, not just studying. One day, I decided to ask my friend Sarah for help. I was nervous at first because I didn't want to show her how much I was struggling. But Sarah was kind. She listened and agreed to practice with me once a week. We started having small conversations in English. I made a lot of mistakes, but Sarah didn't laugh. She helped me correct them. Slowly, I started to feel more comfortable speaking in English. Chapter 7, Watching TV Shows in English Another thing that helped me a lot was watching English TV shows and movies. At first, I didn't understand much, but I kept going. I turned on the subtitles and listened carefully to the words. Little by little, I began to understand more. I started picking up common phrases and new words. It was exciting! Learning English became a part of my daily life. One of the biggest lessons I learned was the importance of patience. I realized that learning English was going to take time. I couldn't expect to know everything overnight. Some days were good, and some were hard, but I knew I was making progress. I reminded myself that every word I learned was a step forward, even if it was a small one. Chapter 8, Setting Small Goals To keep myself motivated, I started setting small goals. For example, I made a goal to learn five new words every week. It didn't seem like much, 
but it felt more realistic than trying to learn too many words at once. When I reached my goal, I felt proud. It showed me that I was moving forward, even if it was slowly. I learned to celebrate my progress, no matter how small. If I remembered a word or used it in a conversation, I would smile and feel proud of myself. This positive attitude helped me stay motivated. Every success, even the small ones, felt like a victory. Chapter 9 Creating Flashcards One of the best tools I discovered was flashcards. I made my own by writing the word on one side and its meaning or a picture on the other. I carried them with me everywhere. When I was waiting in line or on the bus, I would pull out my flashcards and practice. It was an easy way to keep the words fresh in my mind. In the beginning, I was so afraid of making mistakes. I thought people would laugh at me. But over time, I realized that mistakes are part of learning. When I made a mistake, I tried not to be hard on myself. Instead, I saw it as an opportunity to learn and improve. Chapter 10 Speaking Out Loud One day, I started a new practice, speaking out loud to myself. At first, it felt strange. But I soon realized how helpful it was. I would walk around my room, saying words and sentences out loud. By hearing myself speak, I got more comfortable with the sound of English. It became easier to talk, even when I was nervous. I was lucky to have friends who supported me. They didn't judge me when I made mistakes. Instead, they encouraged me and helped me practice. Having a support system made a huge difference. I no longer felt like I was learning alone. I had people by my side who believed in me. Chapter 11 Learning New Words Every Day I made a commitment to myself. I would learn at least one new word every day. Some days, it was hard to find the time. But I stuck to my promise. Even if I only learned one word, it was still progress. Over time, my vocabulary grew, and I felt more confident in my ability to learn. One thing I realized was the importance of rest. I couldn't push myself too hard. There were days when my brain felt tired, and no matter how much I tried, I couldn't focus. On those days, I allowed myself to rest. I knew that taking a break would help me come back stronger. Chapter 12 Listening to Music in English Music became another tool for learning. I started listening to English songs and paying attention to the lyrics. It wasn't just about enjoying the music anymore, I was learning from it. At first, I didn't understand much, but I listened again and again. I would pause the song, look up words I didn't know, and write them down in my notebook. The best part was that the words stuck in my mind. When I heard a song with a word I had learned, I felt proud. It was like the song was speaking directly to me, reminding me that I was getting better at English, little by little. Chapter 13 Making English a Part of My Day I realized that to really improve, I needed to make English a part of my daily life. So, I started thinking in English. It wasn't easy at first, but I would look at objects around me and say their names in English in my head. If I was cooking, I would say, I need a spoon, or the water is boiling. These small moments made a big difference. 
By thinking in English, I was practicing without even realizing it. Soon, my brain started to switch to English more naturally. Talking to myself in English became a regular habit. It might sound strange, but it helped me a lot. I would pretend to have conversations with someone. Sometimes, I would look in the mirror and ask, how was your day, and then answer in English. This practice gave me confidence. Even though no one was listening, I felt more comfortable speaking out loud. It also helped me find new ways to express myself in English, which made real conversations easier. Chapter 14, The Importance of Practice One day, my English teacher said something that stuck with me, learning a language is like learning to play an instrument. The more you practice, the better you get. That was the moment I realized I needed to keep practicing, even on the days I didn't feel like it. I told myself, if I practice a little every day, I'll get better. And I did. Slowly but surely, I noticed my English improving. Words that once felt impossible to remember were now easy. But even with all the progress, there were still days when I doubted myself. Sometimes, I felt like I wasn't learning fast enough. I would hear native English speakers and think, I'll never speak like that. Those moments were hard. But I reminded myself of how far I had come. I looked back at my notebook and saw the long list of words I had learned. I realized that even though it was slow, I was making progress. And that's what mattered. Chapter 15 Celebrating Success One day, I decided to celebrate my success. I had been working so hard, and I needed to remind myself of how much I had achieved. I invited my friends over for a small party, and we spoke in English as much as we could. It wasn't perfect, but it was fun. We laughed, made mistakes, and learned from each other. That night, I realized something important, learning a language is not just about memorizing words. It's about connecting with people, sharing ideas, and building confidence. One of the scariest things for me was speaking English with strangers. I was always afraid they would judge me for my mistakes. But one day, I decided to face my fear. I went to a coffee shop, ordered in English, and asked the cashier how their day was. To my surprise, they smiled and responded kindly. It was a small moment, but it meant so much to me. I realized that people aren't as focused on my mistakes as I thought. They appreciated my effort, and that gave me the courage to keep practicing. Chapter 16, Looking Forward As I look back on my journey, I see how far I've come. Learning English words wasn't easy, but I did it. I used to feel lost and frustrated, but now I feel proud. I'm still learning, and I know I'll keep improving. The most important lesson I learned is this, don't give up. It's okay to struggle. It's okay to have bad days. What matters is that you keep trying. Step by step, word by word, you'll get there. I can't wait to see where my English journey will take me next.